Hello, welcome to Maths with J. Here we've got a triangle that's not a right angle triangle, not an isosceles triangle, so we're going to need to use the sine rule or the cosine rule or both of them. So let's see what we're trying to do. We want to find angle x, and that's opposite a side that we do know, but the other angle that we've got is not opposite the other side that we know. So if we tried to use the sine rule, here's what would happen we'd get that the sine of angle x over a known side, so 7, is equal to the sine of angle 37 over, and then it wouldn't be over a side that we know, because that would be over the length RQ. So let's just number that 1, and hopefully we'll be able to use that later on if we can find RQ. So now, looking at that triangle, we're thinking, OK, we know two sides and the angle between them. Can we find the side opposite the angle 37? And we can. That's what the cosine rule is for. So we've started off using the sine rule. And that will help us later on. But now we want to look at the cosine rule. And that tells us the side that we want, so that's RQ and the square of that side, so RQ squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides. So it starts off looking like Pythagoras, but then we subtract 2 times the product of those two sides, so 7 and 12, and the cosine of the angle between those two sides. So if we use a calculator to work that out, we will get 58.829 something or other. And then square rooting that value on the calculator will give us 7.6700. So now that we've found RQ, we can now go back to equation 1 where we used the sine rule, and all we need to do is put that in, and we'll be able to find sine x first of all, and then go on and find x. So let's have a look at how that works. And I think we need to make ourselves a bit of space first. Right, so what we could do is first of all, just make sine x the subject of this, couldn't we? So we've got seven sine 37 over RQ. Although we found RQ, because it's not an exact number, I'm, st I'm still going to write RQ on your calculator. You can just use the, uh, the answer button. So when you work this out, you'll get 0 0.54924 and so on. And then you'll find the angles whose sine is equal to that by using the inverse sine button, and that will give you 33.315 and so on. And so to the nearest degree, the angle comes out as 33 degrees. Now remember, you need to always consider when you're using the sine rule like this, if there's another possible angle. But if you look at the sides that we've got here, the side opposite angle x is 7. And there's another side in the triangle that's 12, so that's a, a bigger side. So x can't possibly be a huge angle, yeah? because if we did 180 minus 33, we'd have an enormous angle, and that would be impossible for a side that's opposite a side that's not a big side, not the biggest side. So x is 33, degree, so 33 degrees to the nearest degree.